everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. As we head towards kickoff, two quarterbacks will be on the field today trying to push their team to victory. It's the Titans going up against the Rams. With that, we're once again off to L.A. We're standing by. Here are Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Well, Larry, there's a new stadium set to open in Inglewood in 2019, but for now, we're in the heart of the city of angels, Los Angeles, California. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Tennessee Titans and the Los Angeles Rams. The tight end changing his position. First down, Mariota. Walker with a grab, left side. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. <laughs> and he'll give it here to his running back. And he stopped immediately there. And he'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? And <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. It's a gain of three, and it gets him the first. Oftentimes, we think of those tough yards as grinding yards that a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? Big fella, get it to him. Let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They go play action here on first down. Deep drop. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Offensive starters, here they are. And Delaney Walker, Charles, it's a guy that you and I said we wanted to discuss a bit. Yeah, and we should because, remember, he came out of college as a wide receiver. So he's one of the early guys to move from a wide receiver position to tight end and still run routes as if he were a wide receiver. An excellent target. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. <laughs> Throwing again, Mariota on second and 10. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. Aaron Donald in there to get him, and that's sack number six for him on the year. And the defense will try and pin their ears back and get pressure again here after the sack. It's third down. Third and long here for Mariota. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Give him nine on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. That's certainly playing down a distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Austin. 
A good return there, 17 yards. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. The Let's one go. running back is Gurley. He's going to get the football. Able to get away. That's why you keep the legs churning. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing in the playbook, but boy, the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? Longer yardage situations, they often become bolder. He's going to take a shot right away, and he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. The offense on your screen now, and Todd Gurley on your screen. That is the back of the present and the future. And what an amazing return for him from a knee injury his last year in college at the University of Georgia. Now it's like it never happened. There's nothing he can't do on the football field. And if you're a defense, that's a long day trying to prepare for Todd Gurley. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. A look at the defensive starters for Tennessee. Terrell Casey doesn't get the attention that he deserves, but he is an absolutely terrific defensive tackle. The best player on just about any team he would play on. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. Let's go! Blue Liner! Blue Liner! Third and long. It's gone. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't turn it over. Right? You're giving it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. And wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something bad to be gained from it. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Now a second down throw for Mariota. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's brought down. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Now the offense lining up first and 10. Mariota now to throw on first down. Over the middle this time to Fowler. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. They come up with an offset eye. Now Mariota. 
He'll rifle this one deep right side. And it's knocked away and incomplete. The starters on defense here for Los Angeles. Mark Barron entered the league as a safety, but really plays much more like a linebacker. One thing we always notice at the end of every game, his stat sheet is full. So a second down incompletion now brings up third down. Now a handoff here to his running back. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Right, Let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and maybe the offensive move a little bit Sometimes better. it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> a one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, Hey, congratulations right, to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. Goff now looking to throw. And right with it here over the middle. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll be third down. That was not a completion that results in a highlight video. But at the same time, if you have those kind of completions all game long, eventually one of them might turn into a highlight. So completion on second down, that brings up third. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. Nine yards on the play and a first down. The offensive line and its ability to open holes in this defensive front, something they were confident they could create in this game, got the job done there, picked up the first. And something they wanted to do. Have we ever met offensive linemen that don't want to fire out and hit people? I mean, they I'm love scared of the running down. game. Guys want to do that. And when you emphasize it, practice it, and work on it, that gives you an opportunity during the game. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That was a nice completion on an out route. And those types of plays are the result of arm strength by the quarterback and timing by the receiver. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Golf on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Second down here after the incomplete pass. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. A nice pick up there. Ten yards, and it'll move the sticks. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Go on, go on. Here we go. Three nineteen. Three nineteen. No, 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 no. Check. Patriots. Detroit. Detroit. So now it's first and goal. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. So stuff from the two. Now what? You know me pretty well. What do you think I want here? play action definitely let him get outside and create and if he has to run it he has a little bit more space
Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Set. Green 39. Green 39. To throw on second down is gone. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Avery Williamson in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. So the sack means it's third and goal now from the 10. Now let's go. Green, 30. Now Goff on third and goal. This will be caught just inside the 10. And I think the ball's out. And this is going to kick out of bounds. Boy, a fortunate bounce or two there. They'll keep possession back inside the 10-yard line. Zero's kick is right through, and the Rams have the first points here. It's 3-0. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And last time, the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, and pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they thought they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Second and very short here, less than a yard. One, one, clear, 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 one. Clear, 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 clear. Mariota now on second down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. One, one, one. One, one. They go play action here on first down. And he's got his man on the comebacker. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and it'll make it a second down. As if he didn't have enough to think about on that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, decided to make sure he toe-tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with the sideline since you, you've got better vision of it. I think that's a great point because you should know exactly where you're going and know how much space you have and make sure you get your feet down. But yeah, coming back to the football, I like it. Good vision. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. The tight end in motion right. Mariota now to throw on first down. And nearly picked off there. Almost intercepted. Instead, second down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage. Breaks on the football. Just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. Now a handoff as they run left side. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. So they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Now Mariota, and he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. One of his main targets, Delaney Walker, the intended receiver, and that brings up fourth down. And 
this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. Right, and that Go offense, United. they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Too bad. I don't know about Too that. Bad. <laughs> Super tough. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Fake the handoff. Now gone. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. A good pick up there. 26 yards. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. And he'll take it down to the 30-yard line. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Playing as a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. Back to the ground, this time with Gurley. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now Goff on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. Give him eight on the play, and that'll make it a second down. I think we need to come up with a different name for this position. We keep calling it the fullback position. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a fullback, but we know this. Whoever's coming out of that spot is usually bigger and stronger, and they may not run away from people, but they'll run through them. Yeah, able to shed tacklers. We saw it right there. On second down, here's Goff. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Time to step aside. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. So the offense has it first and 10. All right, here we go. Three, left. Back to the ground game here. Gurley. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Shift together here from the D-line. Here we go now. And to give this time to the tailback. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two, now third down. So if I'm an offensive coordinator, there's one thing that I know for sure. This is one of the top five teams in the NFL against the run. So when I look at my playlist, I'm probably thinking about throwing it. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Throw 
going on third. Gone. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Tyler Higby, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Rams add on to their lead. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure... If something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk is a big decision here. To throw is Mariota. He's going to let this. Yeah, is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. Right, a really oh, yeah. nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need? Trying for right, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Parrish Cox. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the return just out across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. The one running back is Gurley, and they'll give it to him here. And a short pickup there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. So we come upon halftime here in Southern California with the Rams on top. Yeah, that's perfect. Two, Davis, deep. Uh, hey, I got to go. I got to go. Okay, and sorry about that. Didn't know Larry got cut off early. We are back and ready for the third quarter. And the Rams now coming out on the field. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at them. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. They come up in an oh, offset eye. And they'll go on the ground. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. In my book, that's running the ball well. 
but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is fielded at the 27. A very good return that time. 18 yards, and it'll be Titan football. A look at the offense now here, coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively, and now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like in the half? Because yeah, me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, Mariota. And Walker with it over the middle. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Hey, when Marcus Mariota was at Oregon, throwing to the tight end wasn't much of an option, was it? That spread offense, you didn't have him on the field too much. Now, he's got one of the best in the game in Delaney Walker. Now, last year, Walker led all the tight ends with 94 catches. They go play action here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And on second and ten now. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he's going to be met at about the 43. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. They'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. They come up in an offset eye. On third down, Mariota. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. That one goes for 24 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They run it for the first time with a backup Murray. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Second down run for Murray. And he'll push his way up to about the 14. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Now Mariota. And that is incomplete. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. So on fourth down, here's the Tennessee field goal unit led by Ryan Sucker. 
And Suckup will put this one right through. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. A decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvage three out of it, but they do inch a bit closer. Yeah, still lots of time to go in this one. Take the points, move on, and let your defense try to get the ball back. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now a play fake here on first down. They're looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. They'll get 19 yards there. And that leads to a Los Angeles first down. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that. And having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Hurry up, here we go. 319. From the 50, it's gone. The right's got it. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. He lost four there, and it's third down. Now that was well defended, and as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. A nickel set shown by the Titans on third down. Think and pass. From the gun on third down, gone. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. 
Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. From the red zone now, gone. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Back now in Los Angeles. It's the Rams out in front here. They've got control of the football as well as we get set for the fourth quarter. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green. On second down, here's Goff. That is caught at the seven-yard line. A gain of four on the play, and that'll make it third and one. Oh, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Hurry up, here we go. Blue 90. Blue 90. Ah! On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. And thus far in this NFL season, no touchdown scored for him, and he's not going to get it on that play either. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Walker with a grab. Left side. Weaving through traffic, and now he's free. Touchdown, Titans. Delaney Walker, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Titans are able to make this a close game again. So many times you think of these tight ends catching the ball already in the end zone, but today's tight end, they can run after the catch, too, to score. They are big, they're strong, but they're extremely athletic and they can surprise the heck out of you when they get the ball in their hands and they're running away from the defense. This is taken at his four. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And the Rams getting set to go now. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because <laughs> you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Again. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That was a really nice play, to be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Second down, nine yards to go. Let's go! Green, 39! Here's Goff now on second down. And right with it here, over the middle. And he'll go down, shy of the 40 at the 41. Give him seven on the play, and that'll bring up a third and one.
So here we go, a third down after the second down pass completion. Set, blue lining. Blue lining. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They come Let's out go. here in the eye. And he'll give it here to his running back. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. A gain of three, second down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. The throw on second down is gone. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Kevin Dodd coming hard that time. He's able to run him down for a loss of 12. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. A dime look defensively here for the Titans on third. Goff now looking to throw. Finding time. Complete to right. And he gets it down to the 32. It'll be a gain of 15 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. That was a nice catch. And if the goal was to get in the field goal range, it certainly appears that they accomplished that. Well, and sometimes that's what you dial up in these situations, right? When you want three. Well, if the goal was to get into field goal territory, even though it'll be a long attempt, I think they accomplished that. And sometimes you have plays for that. It's not always a first down where you want three, get a little bit closer, make it an easier shot. Yeah, sometimes you just have to concede to the defense and they know what you're trying to get done and to try and get any more than that is almost folly. Take what you can get, maybe have an opportunity to put three points on the board. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. So here we go, first and 10 now. And they'll run it here. Room here to run. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. And on the ground they go with a running back. Only a gain of a yard there, but it indeed gets them a new set of downs. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. And let's see what the defensive coordinator may have up his sleeve here to try to get this final last stand and win this football game. Mariota on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Give him two yards on that play, and it'll be second down.
The offense certainly looking to score some points, but they also need ball security here late as we get down to the final moments of this one. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And they just acquired him a new ball carrier. What do you think of the acquisition? I like it. Maybe not the big-time player, big-time impact you're looking for, but someone who wants to prove something and find a new home. And here comes play number six on this drive. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. They keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. Down to the 25. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They come out here in the eye. Back to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. If you're a defender, one of the fun things about playing zone defenses, especially in today's football, is that it's not as static as it was in the good old days, meaning you just dropped to a point and reacted to the football. Now you end up with a lot of man-to-man -man principles once you get into your zone defense. In other words, get to your assignment and then locate a guy coming into your area, and then you end up covering him almost man for man. That allows him to make more plays on the football like the one we just saw there. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. They'll look to throw, and he comes back with one complete. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Partner, they weren't quite in the red zone, but things are starting to get condensed on the field. Throwing the corner route there, really nice play because it gives them a little bit of room to complete it. Red zone opportunity. He'll look to throw. His pass caught at the four. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll bring up a second and goal. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Shift together here from the D-line. Back to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. So many practices we watched over time where the offense works on scoring late in the game and finding a way to win, as we just saw there. Just saw it right there. Now can they preserve that advantage that they just got? And that will make this a four-point game. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here's the Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. One possession game, time very much a factor. How does the offense handle this situation? Well, in a lot of cases, they should be somewhat relaxed. And I know that's counterintuitive because this is a pressure situation. But this is Friday practice every week of the season. You go over this situation, having to go downfield, limited timeouts, got to get out of bounds and keep the drive going and set yourself up. Defensively, you can't just lay back and let them do whatever they want. So it is a cat and mouse deal here. How much pressure will the defense bring and how much pressure can the offense handle? We're going to find out. 
They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. He's back to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. Golf. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he's brought down. Give him 18 on that one. And it'll be a Los Angeles first down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. Second down now after the pass completion. Now it's gone. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, that plays a statistic that's going to go on the defensive team stat sheet. Won't necessarily reflect in hours, right, the overall game sheet. But you and I know that they keep count on pressures, hits on quarterbacks, all those things, hoping to increase that throughout the game. And here we are in the fourth quarter, and they got a big one. Yeah, and such a close game, a very big one. One last throw here for Gaw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Well, Charles, they were close in the end, but they couldn't get that last play, that last little miracle play done. They were within striking distance, but couldn't find a way to score. They definitely had hope. They definitely had opportunity. Just unable to cash in at the end. Not an easy play by any stretch, but they definitely had a chance. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to EA Sports. Thank you. 